Welcome to Benchmark's video demonstration of the Easy Laser E710 shaft alignment system. In this video, we will show you how to use the shaft alignment program for horizontal machines. Before we begin, we would like to thank our friends and actual customer at KSB Pumps Canada for allowing us to use their premises to film this using their E710 system. As you can see, the measuring units are pre-mounted on the bracket and rods. All we need to do is hang the chain on the end of the bracket, wrap it around the shaft, hook it onto the pin, and tighten the nut, and your system is fully mounted. To connect to the system wirelessly, we attach the two Bluetooth units, one for each measuring head. Alternatively, we can use the cables, but for ease and convenience, we go wireless. The display is on and we have already chosen shaft alignment. We now have the option of the Cardin Machine Train Vertical or Horizontal Program and we choose Horizontal. The screen now prompts you to input the machine dimensions and the location of the measuring units. Our first tape measurement is between the stationary and movable measuring units and this is highlighted by the yellow box. It will then ask for the distance to the center of the coupling. This is where you actually measure shaft misalignment. Next will be the distance from the M unit to the front foot of the machine. Then finally, the distance between the machine's feet. These measurements are what the system requires to calculate the amount of misalignment, therefore the correction that is necessary. This screen actually gives you other options. For instance, you can move the movable machine from the right side to the left if it's more convenient. You can add additional machine's feet if necessary. You can also add the diameter of the coupling if you want to see the results as a gap measure. After we input the distances, we can see the live time reading of both units on the screen. There is no need for any beam adjustment because the units have very large detector surfaces, so we take our first measurement by pressing the input button. Notice that the hourglass at the top of the screen is spinning, indicating to wait until the next screen appears. It can also be used as a warning to not move the measuring units because if the shaft is moved, you will have applied torque or pressure. This would give a poor reading and the goal is to get a consistent and repeatable reading. After the first and second readings are recorded, we have to move the units so that they are out of the red 20 degree area shown on the screen and record the third and final reading. Although we only have to move the measuring units a total of 40 degrees, we decide to move them slightly more. This allows us to finish the reading live in the horizontal plane. The results screen show you everything you need to know to make the necessary corrections. On the right side of the screen we have the horizontal plane. We know this because you can see the four feet of the machine, meaning we are looking down on it and it will be moving from side to side. Closer to the top of the screen, we can see the results measured at the center of the coupling, and the 83 mils or thou is the amount of offset as the coupling halves indicate. Below that, we can see it has 2.5 mils or thou of angular misalignment. Looking back at the picture of the machine that is to be moved, the yellow arrows tells us that it is reading live and in which direction it has to go. Under this is the amount of correction needed. In this case, it needs to move 35.5 thou to the left at the front feet and 40.5 thou to the right at the back feet. On the left side of the screen, we have the vertical plane. We know this because there are only two feet of the machine showing, meaning that we will be shimming the machine up and down. The offset at the very top is 40.5 mils or thou, and the angle below is 1 thou. Looking at the corrections at the bottom of the screen, we can see that the machine has to go down 18.5 thou at the front feet and the back feet have to be lifted by 16.5 thou. With these results we can say that there is a lot of misalignment because the machine is skewed in both planes. Before we begin making the corrections, we will start with the vertical plane and move the measuring units to the 12 o'clock position. You can now see the yellow arrows move to the left side of the screen, indicating that it is now reading live in the vertical plane. 
we will make the corrections necessary by lowering the back end and lifting the front. We do this by adding and taking away shim. As we lower the motor, you can see on the display screen the lifetime reading coming down. Once the numbers begin to settle to a final position, we can see that there is little room for improvement, as we can take some shim away from both the front feet and back feet. However, the most important result is the thou per inch offset and angle, which as you can see at the top is one thou of offset and zero thou for the angle, which is well within tolerance. Next we move the measuring units to the 9 o'clock position so they read live. Now we can make the corrections in the horizontal plane. The motor is skewed, so we start to make small adjustments rather than making large moves, which is the best way to make corrections on this size of a machine. Look at the display at the live time readings as we make the corrections. After making all the corrections, the final result is very good.